Before we started the restoration of this Subaru, I had a lot of ideas of the direction I wanted to take it, what I wanted to do with it. And as we really dove deep into the process, Randall and I have learned so much. We've got our blood, sweat, and tears into it. And we've kind of really done everything the right way in our eyes. It's really kind of evolved in this idea and picture in my head of just being the ultimate daily driver for myself to drive for probably the rest of my life. Probably hopefully have a lot of other cars, but I feel like I'm gonna spend a ton of time. This is like a piece of my identity, what I looked up to as a kid. So to be driving this around every day gets me giddy and I don't think that will ever go away because of the nostalgia of a car like this. It's two doors. Subaru Rumble, it's got a wing on the back of it. It's gonna be a blast to drive. It'll be manual, it'll be really quick off the street light. It's everything I look for in a daily driver to just keep a smile on my face and give people a unique experience when they just need to go down the street with me somewhere. But if you're gonna be driving a car every day like this, you definitely wanna have an amazing sound system. And not just one that sounds good, but one that has an awesome display that has Apple CarPlay, because I'm a diehard Apple CarPlay fan. After I had it once in the Mustang, I'm like, I'll never own another car that doesn't have it. If I can get it somehow, I'm gonna find a way. On my first truck before I started my channel, I had a fully custom sound system, which is funny because my cousin used to live at this house and now I live here. And when I was 16, I drove here at, from out of town and installed my first sound system in my first truck. Literally modifying cars like started here and I ended up back here, it's kind of crazy. But anyways, I had component speakers, two subwoofers in the back, amplifiers. That thing sounded so good and I enjoyed it every single day of high school, every day. All my friends love that sound system. I still have not had a car that had one that sounds that good because I've just never slowed down to do it right like I did the first time. So we're gonna be stopping doing it right on this car and I'm looking forward to sharing that process with you. I'm a huge fan of tech, I like nice things, and I'm proud to say that this video is sponsored by Sony. We're gonna be installing a really rad sound system that they have out and they just released their new head unit that we're gonna be installing with Apple CarPlay, that's a massive screen. And now I'm formally introducing you to the Sony Mobile ES system. This stuff is clean, check it out. video we go over installing this sound system Randall goes off on teaching us about wiring we get up and personal with this huge screen with Apple CarPlay and at the end we go over our overall thoughts on the process the system and what I exactly look for when I get into sound systems so that you guys can see if this is fit for you I have all the products and things and tools we use in this video linked in the description including the sound system of course let's dive into the process of installing some 2021 technology into a 1996 old Subaru. I can't wait to drive this every day and have this big old screen. It's gonna, it's way nicer than any of the other entertainment, infotainment, whatever you wanna call it systems in any of my cars I've ever had.
start the install process, Randall's gonna go ahead and pull out our custom firewall. This could be the back seat of a modern car you would bolt the amps to. That's a very popular. I'll throw a picture in from Google what that would look like. Traced out. So where this firewall sits in the back of the trunk. Now where that line is, is where the top of the firewall is. Now I wanna get those amps mounted up as close as I can to that top portion. As straight as possible. I'm going to go ahead and use my spring-loaded center punch here. So I'm going to mark right in the middle so I know exactly where to drill. All the pilot holes have been drilled and I am going up to the next drill bit size, which is going to be a size number 5.5. .5. This is a metric drill bit set. so. I'm gonna go ahead and instead of using rib nuts, since this is eighth inch thick aluminum, I'm gonna go ahead and just tap these holes. It's not holding up a lot of weight, so I think this will be just fine. So tapping means I'm gonna take this tap right here and I'm gonna actually create threads inside of this piece of aluminum so the bolt will thread right into it. Yes, you're supposed to use this tool right here whenever you tap stuff, but I've always used a drill. Well, I have used this sometimes, but the drill, they say it doesn't work. I've never had it not work, so. Installing sound systems can be intimidating for simply the concept of wiring. That is something you should not be scared of. I wasn't scared of it in the past, but after learning from Randall throughout this process, I have no fear with this anymore. And I understand how to do it right. So let me break it down for you really quick. We've got a selection of just standard copper wire that we can use for speaker wire. All copper wire is the same. The thickness changes and rubber on the outside can be different colors. Just simply for organization so you know what's what. That's it. You have a kit like this, like Randall has, where you have a bunch of different connectors. Some have a little circle, some have a bigger circle, some have this little fork, some just have a butt on each side. Some are these flat pieces. You have a pair of electrical pliers that can crimp these. So you stick the wire in here, crimp it, and then this exterior part that's colored, you heat it up and it shrinks and holds the wire in place. Our friends over at Wire Care, we have linked in the description. We use the self-wrapping sleeving for the wire. This stuff is nice. Let me show you up close really quick. We're using this a ton throughout this entire build. You'll see it in other episodes too. These are a bunch of wires in here and this, Randall's got these tied together with this little tape and then we've got the sleeving around it also. And that just has a nice finish throughout the whole car. We've got this everywhere. How rad is that? Randall loves them zip ties too. So we have those linked in the description as well. Randall's even got zip ties that slide in to the holes and like mount the wire. Hit Randall with that follow on Instagram for being a savage with the electrical. Cause I always have a rat's nest of electrical stuff. I'm, I'm learning from him though not to do that. So the two wires coming out of the door here, um, run all the way through, through this wire loom here and all the way back to the amp. So we're gonna go ahead and hook our fork connectors on to these wires, and then we'll go ahead and get it hooked over to our crossover right here. On some crossovers, you will only have two inputs. However, with the ones from Sony here, uh, we have four. So they include a jumper right here. So we're only gonna hook our inputs to just one side here. So I'm gonna do it to the woofer side. And then once that signal travels through here, we have our four wires that come out on the other side. Two will go to the woofer and then two will go to the tweeter. 
using a self-tapping screw we're mounting the crossover to the door there is room and clearance with the door panels we have for this car next thing we're going to do is we set one screw in the speaker we're using a drill bit and making another hole ready for another speaker and then we are ready to put the wires on those connections were a little loose so we soldered them on we have a drill bit to make the new holes and then we use the supplied hardware screw the speaker into it make sure our crossover is good hook up the wires to our tweeter we're going to solder those wires on as well just an extra layer of protection to make sure that there's good connection using the adhesive back that comes in the kit these tweeters don't weigh anything so the adhesive actually works really really good for making an easy mount situation a little zip tie finish it off clip it off we're ready to go ain't going nowhere Cardboard cutouts, a piece of aluminum, self-tapping screws. Randall gave us a blank slate to drill a six and five eighths inch hole. Using that hole saw, we have linked in the description to Amazon to make holes for six and a half inch speakers. Since this car did not come with that from factory, we had to make do, make something custom to make it work. You can see where Randall has the crossovers mounted, the amplifiers back here, and now it's time to mount the tweeters. We're gonna go ahead and drill a hole slide our wires through connect those to our crossover once we're done and then we have our tweeters mounted is that thing going anywhere ain't going nowhere This head unit has the option to have a camera on the front of your car and the rear. So, rear camera in, camera in one, and all of our audios for our RCOs that are going to the amp will all plug in here. As a new person, a super popular point of stress would be how do you mount a aftermarket deck or head unit into your dash where your stock stereo was? The one in these cars was pretty big, which I would call a double DIN. So this is a single DIN. So the small radios are a single DIN. And so what we're doing, we're taking a single DIN kit and installing it into a double DIN style head unit spot on the dash. So what that means is, is we have a our radio here, which our screen attaches to that. Then we have the single DIN attachment. And this actually is able to work in unison with this so the fitment of these can vary the mounting bracket that you're looking at comes off the side of the stock oem head unit for every car you're going to take it off and then attach it to your new head unit that way you can mount it into the dash and it has a place to mount all the screws and bolts to hold it in place depending on what kind of setup you're using if the screen to fit as flush as possible to the dash i found that this mounting position is best so Technically, you're supposed to use two screws to mount this to the deck. However, I'm utilizing this dash kit piece to give it more st stability and support. This DIN is pretty much useless for us because the screen will be covering it. But like Randall said, this is being used to add some rigidity to this whole setup. And we want to do that because the head unit is so big. And when you hit bumps, you don't want your screen moving around. So any sort of rigidity we can add, we will at any point. But this would normally be useful in a double DIN stock head unit situation when you are converting it to a single DIN head unit where it's just a skinny radio. So something a little bit more affordable. You don't want a screen, you just want something super simple. You can convert a double DIN style into a single DIN and then you just buy the kit that we're showing you here and that gives you a little cubby hole. But we're just using it for a little bit of rigidity. It's a good place to hide our Tic Tacs. If you see, Lead by example, Randall's got one, two, three, four on this side, and four on this side. <clears throat> Give her the old check. She ain't going nowhere. So now we're gonna plug in our RCA adapter here, which appears it goes right here. So, 
GPS. GPS little puck thing. Looks like that goes right there. We're up to date with technology. We got a USB C to a USB C female. Down there. And this is the main plug right here. That'll plug right into here. However, I'm gonna wire in these few little pieces first before I plug it in to give me some more room. So being that we are using amplifiers for our speakers, traditionally you would be hooking up all these other wires directly to the wiring kit that would go to your factory door speakers. However, we're not gonna be utilizing these since we're gonna be using the RCA signal output. Where are these blue ones going? So this blue and white stripe is our remote rewire. So this is what goes to those to the amps to turn the amps on. This yellow wire is our constant power. This red wire is our switched power. Switched power is what turns the head unit on and off. When you have the key and on, turns it on. Vice versa, off, turns it off. Where do those wires go to? So those wires have into the main harness. Yes. So those I have my wiring diagram wiring diagram up here to see which wires are which. So from Pro Demand here, I got the wiring harness printed off for this car. 2005 Subaru Impreza. Cars, they don't keep it as simple. Usually your power wires aren't gonna be always matching the color of this harness. So this constant wire on this is yellow. Constant wire coming from the car is blue and red. Randall got the main harness and he stripped the wires. So he can tap into them with these. Whiskey throttle in the end. <laughs> bolt it in we got the head unit into the receiver here so now we're gonna go ahead and screw it in the mounting point right here she ain't going nowhere cut the center piece off and we also cut this tab off and this tab off. So we're gonna be making our wires that's gonna go from our sub to our hard port on our subwoofer box right here. So if you look on the inside, you'll see two female or male posts back there. And on the back side, this is where your wire coming off your amplifier will go into. So we're gonna make these wires that go from the sub to those posts. A 16 gauge wire will work just fine. Color doesn't matter, wherever you have will work. However, I'm gonna be using red for positive, black for negative. And you can just go ahead and stick that in there like so and it'll work perfectly fine. However, since I'm super OCD about everything, what I'm gonna be using here are these are called ferrules. We'll leave a link in the description below um, to a kit. So what these do, you slide this over the wire here. You want the wire to come out just a little bit at the end. You take your crimper here. So if you see here with this open, what that does is it squeezes it together. So we'll take the ferrule, stick it in there. You don't want to get the plastic, you just want the metal. And squeeze it. And now that created a crimp is now good like I said that will be a little bit of a I guess better connection but like I said either or will work just fine and then I'll take my dykes or some people call them preferred lifestyle cutters I'll just go ahead and cut off the end there like so so now this end right here we'll go ahead and put these are heat shrink um, female spade connectors Go ahead and strip that off. Go 
top off my OCD, put a little heat shrink on here, which will go over that black connector just to hold it a little more securely. And then we'll take our crimpers. It's a good connection. Now it's like the heat gun. And if you heat both ends, this side right here will, on this specific connector, will shrink down as well. So I tried just to get this back portion because if I shrink this, it's going to make it really difficult to slide it over that post inside of the box. So these heat shrink connectors are totally optional for this application. Um, what these are, this is a technically a waterproof um, connection. It's not going to be 100% waterproof. I like to use these just for extra security. Um, you have your typical non-heat shrink connectors that obviously your wire still gets crimped down and then that's it. However, inside of these heat shrink connectors is a almost like a glue substance so whenever it heats up if you can see real closely at the end of that there's kind of a little bit of seepage that's coming out that's almost like a glue so once this cools off completely this will be super hard and super durable so it's like an extra layer of protection to keep that wire from coming out of the spade and then on this side do the same thing just heat up this heat shrink so now this is this positive terminal is ready to go and be installed into the box and we'll do the same thing for the black wire here so now that we got both of these installed here I just went ahead and put zip ties on this this is not required however it just makes it a little neater and keeps the wires from coming apart from any of the vibration or whatnot that happens inside of here so now we'll go ahead and take our two connectors here and if you look on this specific box you can see it marked positive on the left and negative on the right so now that we know black is our negative and red is our positive we'll go ahead and hook these up So now that everything's hooked up, you do want to give yourself a little bit of slack with this wire. You don't want this to be super tight. You want to be able to take it in and out, put it on top, whatever you may need to do. Wait, 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 you gotta give her the... Oh, that ain't going nowhere. Beautiful. You will also see for the zero gauge wire, we have a fork connector and you need a bigger tool to crimp this. You can use something like this. With the bigger tool, you can put the wire in at the top right there and then you, you can spin these around for different size wire. This is kind of a universal tool. Now when you crimp it down, that will close up big fork like this for a zero gauge wire or something similar. This is a great example of the simplicity, but it looks a lot more hectic than it is. This is a crossover. Randall took over the faceplate, and all we have here is 16 gauge wire, a fork, crimp that together, put heat shrink over it and take some heat to it, and you get a really solid finish and secure connection to this crossover, which will be the same on our amplifier. Once the sound is amplified, it travels via the 16 gauge wire through all eight wires to each of the component speakers in the car. You can see them laid out right here. These are what you're gonna be wiring through the doors and everything else like that through the car. And that's what sends the amplified 
sound to the speakers. Ground wire, important, or power wire that has a fuse hooked up to it to protect the amplifier. Right next to that, we have our 12 volt current to let the amp know to turn on and off. And then we have our speaker wire, our 16 gauge wire that sends the audio signal to the speakers. Moving over, we have our RCAs that are our audio signal from the head unit. And then on the other side of the RCAs, we also have more 16 gauge speaker wire sending the amplified signal to the speakers. And then it's really simple on the subwoofer. We have our two positive and negatives for our subwoofer that send the audio signal once it's amplified. We have our RCAs that gets the information from the head unit. And then we have our 12 volt current to turn it on and off. So this is really, really simple. This looks a little more hectic, but all this is is getting the information from the head unit, amplifying it, sending it to the speakers, making sure it's powered on and off with the key, and then has grounded and powered and has a fuse to protect it. I hope that gives you a basic understanding of how amplifiers are hooked up, how to wire everything. From there, it's up to you how you want to organize it, make it look less hectic. Randall went hard with the little zip ties and getting everything looking as nice as possible. It's a very open-ended subject, but I hope that gives you some clarity. It's time to hear and see what the stereo is like. We have an anti-gravity battery right here, which is a lithium car battery. We're gonna get into that a little bit more when we do the video where we build out the interior and get you caught up, but this video is strictly for the sound system. But little recap, two amps, the two tweeters, the two six and a halves, everything's speaker wire headed to the amp. Six and a half door speaker tweeter crossover on this door. Same thing on that door over there by Randall. Everything goes back to the amps. And then from the amp goes to the head unit to get everything we need to know. And now we can turn on the head unit for the first time and set it up with my iPhone and see what this thing sounds like. Go ahead and do the honors. All right, let's see if my wiring fires this bad boy on. Little startup little de demo, demo we'll turn that off. I uh, saddest that's really responsive. Alright, it's time I go on my phone. First impressions, this screen is humongous. And then Apple CarPlay dumbs things down and makes it look even bigger. Oh yeah. So we can't play Spotify music. We gotta play music we have the rights to, but don't worry. Got the volume buttons on top. Where's your boots at? Got them on. Randall's turning up the sub back there. There we go, now we can hear the sub. The mids and highs sound really clean too already. We haven't even really messed with it yet. This doesn't feel overkill, like some systems just feel like overkill. This just feels like really nice for this little car. Sounds good. It's a lot of speakers for a little car, which is rad, because it feels like you're in like a home theater system. Oh, yeah. Like it's just, you're surrounded, which normally the cars are a little bit bigger than this and they're farther away and you have a bunch of things like tons more plastic. Obviously the car's bare broken down right now, so it sounds even cleaner. But once we get the interior of this thing, it's gonna be awesome. Feels like a home theater system. sound system these days is I don't need a sub that's overkill big I don't need a ton of power to it because when you get I, I like 10 inch subwoofers so we have that on this 
and when you put a decent amount of power to it, nothing crazy with an amplifier, it's a lot of bass that normal people are not used to. And you don't need to go all crazy out your first time because I can tell you that if you just invest in, you know, a couple hundred dollar sub like this and a couple hundred dollar amp, it's gonna be so shockingly loud that you're gonna be like, this is insane. Uh, the reaction you get from the first time having a subwoofer in your car is something I'll never forget. And I didn't have anything crazy my first go around either. And the first time I heard a subwoofer, it was like a shallow 10 inch subwoofer with not a ton of power to it. And I was like, Poof, because a little, a, a, a subwoofer with a little bit of power goes a long way enough to shake your mirrors and you don't need a big old setup to do that. Um, but what's really underrated when you're in the sound system is getting a really nice component speaker and then even having tweeters like we have here. Oh my gosh, like when you hear a sound system that has everything's dialed, EQ'd right, and your amplifiers are set up right, you got a nice low end coming from the rear of the car with your subwoofer, and then you have your mids and highs coming out so clean, like as if you're at a freaking concert. Um, or you have this insane home th theater system that your buddy's rich dad has in his basement with a projector and all this stuff and you're just like, sound just coming from every angle, it's so sharp and crisp, you're just like, what? I don't know, I've never heard it like this. Like, that's what happens when you invest into nice component speakers like this, a nice subwoofer, you have it dialed in. It's just something unique and it's something that's fun and I'm really looking forward to just driving down the road with my girlfriend or one of my friends and just playing our favorite music really loud and it just sounds so good and you're just like, this is, I love being a human. I love being alive. And so I think you will get that reaction out of looking for a full round, a full built out system with those component speakers and a subwoofer, not just going with the subwoofer only or getting, you know, the other option is a full range uh, door speakers. So the full range speakers um, are they have lows, mids, and highs in them. So you install these speakers into your doors and they have the bass, the mids, and the highs. Um, these component speakers only play the mids and highs out of the doors and then the lows only from the subwoofer so it's separated, which I think that has a much more unique um, experience to it that a lot of people actually have not ever heard in their life. And most cars these days, probably 99% of them, they have full range speakers throughout. And that sounds good, it's clean, it's simple, but if you really wanna have something unique that is uh, kind of sh like shocking how nice it sounds and different, you wanna get component speakers and then have a subwoofer take care of your low ends. And it's really, really cool. I hope this video adds a ton of clarity. Thank you so much, Sony, for sponsoring this video and supporting us over at the Carmen Speed Garage. We appreciate you, we're grateful for you, and we're humbled to be working with you. So thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching these videos because these things wouldn't be possible without you being here. And um, Randall and I are honestly living a dream that we are excited about every day to grow and create more content for you guys to find value in and hopefully take something away and build more confidence in the garage because that's what Karma Speed is all about. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next episode. Can't wait to get this car done. Appreciate you and have a good night, day, wherever you're at.